Hi students, welcome to the channel NCRT Maths Tutor. If you like this video, please click the like button, share and subscribe. In this video, I am explaining the solution of miscellaneous exercise chapter 1 sets question number 5 and 6. Question number 5 show that if A is a subset of B, then C minus B is a subset of C minus A. So here, First, before solving the question, first let us see what is C minus B. See, I have taken some random values here for the C set and B set. So, if you find here C minus B, C minus B means we have to remove all the elements of B set from the C set. Then, the remaining is nothing but C minus B. See, in the if you see here, C and B set element, here in the C set we have 2. This is also there in this B set. That means you have to remove this 2 from the C set so that the remaining is 1. So that is nothing but C minus B. So here you can write one general statement. That is, let us say that we have an element X. So for C minus B, the X belongs to C but the X does not belong to C. Right here, if I take this 1 as x, then you can see that the 1 belongs to c, but 1 does not belong to b. So here, for c minus b, we have to take such elements where the x belongs to the c, where x does not belong to b. Or, for example, if you have here a minus b, then if you take one element x, then that x belongs to a and x does not belong to b. So this is elements you have to take or if you have here b minus a then if you take the element x then the x must belongs to b and x should not belongs to a so like this way you have to consider so now here let us uh, solve this uh, question see i will consider one element let us say that the element is x which is there in this c minus b so uh, I am assuming that. So let us assume that there is an element x and that element is belongs to c minus b. So x belongs to c minus b. If x belongs to c minus b means what? See here in this example if you see 1 belongs to c minus b. That means what? This 1 belongs to c right and 1 does not belongs to b. You can see clearly by seeing the example here 1 belongs to c but 1 does not belongs to c. So I have taken the element as x. So if this is true means we can say that x belongs to c but x does not belongs to b. But here, we know that here x belongs to C, but x does not belong to A. Why? See, in the question they have given that A is a subset of B. A is a subset of B means what? Every element of A set must be there in B. So, if there is some element which is not belongs to B means that element cannot be there in even A also. There is no chance because A is a subset of B, right? So, that's why here we can even say that if X does not belongs to B means X even does not belongs to A. Why that is? Because A is a subset of B. So, if you have like this way, X belongs to C but X does not belongs to A, this is nothing but what? C minus A, right? See, I have given here example, A minus B means X belongs to A and X does not belongs to B. B minus A means X belongs to B and X does not belongs to A. So, we can write this one as X belongs to C minus A. So, now here we assume that X belongs to C minus B and uh, we reach the solution that X belongs to C minus A. So, there is an element X which belongs to C minus B as well as C minus A. That means here now we can say that C minus B is a subset of C minus A. Next here we will see the sixth question. Assume that P of A is equal to P of B show that A is equal to B. See, P of A, these are the power sets. So, what is a power set? How to find the power set? For example, let us take the set A. In the set A, I have taken 1, 2. If you want to find out the power set of this one, then it is nothing but 2 to the power 2. This 2 is nothing but number of elements in the set. So, here we have to get 4 elements in the power set because 2 square is equal to 4. So, when you are writing the power set, always you have to include the null set. So, if this is the set, then we can write the power set as 
P of A is equal to first you have to include the null set, then you have to consider the individual element that is 1, then 2, then together 1, 2. So here this is the power set of A set. Now here uh, they have given that there are two power sets A and B, P of A and P of B, these are equal. And uh, we have to prove that A is equal to B. So now let us uh, do this one. See, here first I will assume that there is an element X and that element X belongs to A. So if the element X belongs to A means what? This implies that the element also belongs to P of A, right? For example here, see in the example we have 1, 2. Let us take 1. If I say that this 1 belongs to A means this 1 also belongs to P of A, right? The 1 is there here also. So 1 belongs to A means that implies 1 belongs to P of A also. Because power set means it is a combination of values of the set. So here x belongs to A implies that x belongs to P of A. But in the question they have given that P of A is equal to P of B. These both are equal. That means here in this place I can even write P of B also. Because P of A is equal to P of B. So P of B. So x belongs to P of B. X belongs to P of B means what? Here we can say that X, this implies X belongs to B also. For example, in the example, see here, uh, they have given in the question that P of A is equal to P of B. So we can write even P of B also is equal to this one. If P of B is equal to this means here the element of B set are 1 and 2. And even this one is existing here as well as here. So X belongs to P of B implies that X even belongs to the B set. So now here we got x belongs to b. Next here, as uh, here we have taken that x belongs to a. So x belongs to a and x belongs to b. So we got here x belongs to a and x belongs to b. If these two are true, that means we can say that a is a subset of b. Right. Next here, I will take one more element. Let us say that the element is y. And uh, I will assume that the y belongs to b. So if y belongs to b, let us say that the element is 2. 2 belongs to b means this 2 is also there in p of b, right? So this implies that y also belongs to p of b. But in the question they have given that p of a is equal to p of b. So in the place of p of b, I am writing now p of a. So y belongs to p of a. y belongs to p of a. That implies that y also belongs to the a, right? Here, for example, if I take the element, 2 here. If 2 is there in P of A, this 2 is also there in A also. So Y belongs to P of A implies that Y belongs to A also. So now here we have taken Y belongs to B and we got here Y belongs to A. So as Y belongs to B as well as Y belongs to A, we can say that B is a subset of A. So now here, if you compare 1 and 2, the conditions 1 and 2, see A is a subset of B and B is a subset of a that implies that A is equal to B. Here A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. For example, in the A set if you have 1, 2 and in the B set 1, 2. See here, um, the all the elements of A set are there in B set. So here we can say that A is a subset of B. Then again, if you Compare B and A. All the element of B set are there in A set. So here you can say that B is a subset of A. Now as A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, these two sets are equal. You can see here, here we have 1, 2. Here also we have 1, 2. So if these two conditions satisfies means both the sets are equal. So from 1 and 2 we get here A is equal to B. So this is about solution 5 and 6. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel NCRT Maths Tutor to get more regular updates. Thanks for watching.